Hey guys and welcome back to the harsh and unforgiving world of post for Nem, where our armour is horrifically uncoordinated and we also have a few things to do today. Now you can see down on the bottom I have a few new elements to welcome to the group. These have almost all entirely been got from things like granite, andesite and diorite. Uh, the first one is barium. Down the bottom here, like off the scale of where I was putting stuff, but there we go, yay! Another one is zinc, one that we've been missing for a little while, belongs just in this little, um, this little line up here. I don't, I can't remember which one belongs there, but that, that's the next one I'm after. And then we have this, biotite. T -t -t I don't know. Uh, but this contains, you can see on the end, some fluorine. Now we need to uh, take these out and pop them, I believe, just ne just above the chlorine. Brilliant. I've just noticed we don't have any of the noble gases. This is quite a shame. But there we go. Three new elements added to the, uh, to the table. Love it. We are starting to get quite full. This is a very empty line. I'm not sure what we need to do to do that, uh, to start filling those up, but there we go. Another thing I would like to do, now I believe it goes like this. Yes, is to make a daylight sensor, because whilst I was chatting to Landstrider uh, about this, he was like, hey dude, don't you know Enderman don't like sunlight? I was like, really? He's like, yeah, you should put a, a roof on it so they all won't try and teleport away. I was like, yeah, I could put a roof, but gravity is a thing, and I don't do roofs very well. Uh, hey, Robert. How's it going? Uh, as is shown everywhere around us. So I thought what I might do instead is uh, pop a little daylight sensor on top of this. And then when we come in here, oh, active uh, without signal is what we actually want. So when the sun goes down, you know, the opposite of this daylight situation we are in now, it will start uh, spawning again. We are literally just waiting. So hopefully they will... Ooh. <laughs> just fell down there. So hopefully they won't teleport away when they get spawned now. Alright, cool. What else are we doing? Well, let's have a look inside the book. So last time we were working through all of this stuff, and given that this lot up here is all kind of locked away inside all this mechanism stuff. Oh look, there's actually more mechanism stuff. We'll come back to that. But as, as this is all locked away inside the mechanism stuff, I thought we might do this bit first. Uh, and it is quite a lot of stuff to do. So let me go away, gather my stuff together. Together and we'll be back to work on this. Uh, welcome back to the B room, which I think we really do need to move these two boxes here because, man, I keep coming back here to do some electronic stuff and that is not what we need to do. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of throw this capacitor in here, this printed circuit board and this transistor gets us the electronic circuit that we're after. Oh, it's going to take forever. Ever, isn't it? Okay, well, I'm going to start layering up things that I need to use later. In fact, whilst we're doing that, I'm going to use these bits here. I'm going to put this one in the middle. I believe it's these ones in the corner and then these around like so. We get ourselves a machine chassis chassis chassis. Man, I hate that word, that little phrase so much. So you can see we've got the 100% there. Hopefully right in here we should be able to also get 100% for that. Brilliant. And the next thing on is this. Now, if I remember how to do so... No, no, I couldn't remember how to do so. Okay, so it's the chip in the middle, gold top and bottom, uh, redstone in the corners. I've not brought enough redstone with me. Oh, no. Thankfully, I keep some up here. I, I, re I remember what's going on, honestly. Uh, we also have some more in there. That That's much better uh and we're gonna pop that in there and go all right do your thing pump up to the uh, clockwork power gotta save that redstone save the redstone uh, and there we go. All right, awesome. With those three items there, we should have got all those. The reward I'm going to claim is the diamond. Seem, seems like a good choice. All right, what is the next one on then? We have got this modular tech. We need to make a socket remote. Engineer Toolbox Unlimited was a corporation that specialized in modular function. Its systems were highly customizable to the needs of their customers. Most considered the tech hard to grasp, but worth the effort to understand. Okay, so we need to do that. Let's have a look at the socket remote, shall we? Turns out there's only three things called remote. That's that's pretty good. Remote terminal, remote, and remote socket. The remote terminal really sounds like a good laugh, but we'll get to that in a second. We need to build one of these. Uh, I think we can do this. We've got that on us. What's this blank module? Oh, wow. All right, I'll be back after I've collected some stuff. Thankfully, we've got the uh, red, blue, and green here. Oh, man. was it like dark blue or original blue? Oh, it's original blue. We're going to have to go get some lapis. Of course it's Lazarite. Ah, oh, why, why would it not be Lazarite? We, we all know that Lazarite is the way to get to uh, 
to lapis. So, ah, oh, do, do I actually have any of the stuff here? Look, there's loads of potassium there. Do, have we put potassium on the line? Yes, we have. Okay. Right, always a journey to get there, but we've got some lazarite now. Uh, pop that there. That's the RBG. Okay, what is a next? Oh man, I don't, I don't even have stuff here. Two glowstone dust and three glass panes. Now I've got the three glass panes, and where do we keep the glowstone dust? All right, so we got to put all of those in. We get twelve blank modules, despite the fact that we only want one of them. Okay, so the next thing is the socket. The Ender Pearl. Where do I keep Ender Pearls? Of course, I keep them at the bottom of my hole here. Actual Enderman down here. Oh, is he actually angry at me? Someone was actually angry at me. No, he doesn't seem to want to play ball here. There we go. Got him. And a few simple clicks later, we are here. What does it do? Uh, nothing. Okay, well, we have to figure out how that works. The modular core. You make this with the modular socket. Now, I should actually have that up here. That's nice. I need to make another electronic circuit, another machine sassy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, power management. And, oh, look. All this stuff we actually got given. Robic, get, get out of the ground. Look, what are you doing there? The can't, can't you tell you're just a little bit too low? But anyway, it... Oh. It took a lot of uh, lot of crafting and stuff, but here we are, modular uh, socket system. Boom! Now, what does this do? I literally do not know, but we can break it down for a whole load of stuff. Should we try putting it on the floor and seeing what happens? Now, I've got a feeling, actually, if we go and put it next to a machine, we might do a little bit better. Is this... Oh, oh, maybe not. We don't have any machines to put it next to. Let's pop it up there, see if we can do anything. Yeah, it actually needs power. Alright, give us a second to uh, clear some space. Actually, this... No, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, give us a second to clear some space and I will see what is going on here. So it turns out this entire mod is so ridiculously complex. This is merely kind of a holding station for... I think there's like four liquid tanks, four single slot inventories, four redstone wires and four uh, logic systems in all contained within there. Uh, and then you connect that up to the world using the power of these modules. And look, well, look at all these modules here. Got a refinery, an inventory interface, a burner, all this redstone logic, fluids and items, inputs and outputs, a photobioreactor. Photo bio react. I mean, like, what? But thankfully, if we come into the book, uh, first off, let's let's do this. What are we going to get? The Sterling Generator, the Solar Panel, I think, is actually the one I'm going to claim here. Maybe the Sterling Generator would have been the better one. But if you look, this one here, modular bits completed, one quest unlocked elsewhere. So if we come out and have a look inside the defences, you can see there is this deflectors to full. So yes, this is made with all the stuff here. You can see we've got a couple of circuit boards, the machine chassis. <laughs> oh, I just run full fl full fled into that word now. Uh, and, and a lot of other stuff that I think we can uh, get together relatively easy. Like, we've made all this stuff before. Uh, what else have we made before? The electrical steel. We've, yeah, we've literally made everything here before. So I'm going to go away, grab up all the stuff, maybe put some of this modular stuff in, in a box somewhere. Uh, put the slice and spice back. That That's probably a good idea. So it turns out I'm not allowed to use this quite clear glass. Um, for some reason it just doesn't allow the uh, production of the lenses for this. But after going around and doing a whole lo oh geez am I not allowed to do it like that. Uh, what have we forgotten? It's not the electrical circuits, it's definitely not the uh, electrical steel. This goes in at the top and then it's these two. It's the machine chassis. A whole lot of sweat. Later, we've got the def uh, deflector generator. How does this work? I don't know. I should have really checked that out before making it. Uh, in fact, let me go and have a look. I've got a feeling it's not going to work if I just kind of throw it in here. But we'll try quick. Oh, it does kind of just start working. Oh, that's good. But anyway, I have no idea how to access an interface or anything. So I will be back. Uno momento. Okay, here's a little bit of weirdness. If I take this block and break it and pop it there... Okay, nothing happens. But if we play, break this block and pop it here... Oh man, this was working a second ago. Don't do not do that. Uh, like, when I had that there, it worked. Oh man, why is this suddenly not working? <laughs> I was going to be like, oh, and maybe this means like we need an exposed face or something. I, starting to think that it just doesn't like recording. Like, I put it in that corner and that, that kind of worked as well. Uh, let's, let's try that again. So you see that one works. So why not there? Oh, it, it's it's got to be pseudo-random or something, surely. Surely. I literally just don't know what the deal is here. 
<laughs> okay, well, you know, that didn't quite go as I expected it to. So much so that I need a little bit of extra um, stone there. Okay, in the quest book, we managed to do this quest here. So I'm going to claim, uh, as well as this other deflector generator, oh, another diamond? Se seems like the good one to go for here uh, and also I need to get on with some stuff because you may remember last time we were doing a whole load of the Ender IO well last time we were doing the stuff over here but we were, before that we were doing a load of the Ender IO and we kind of just left it at this one because I realised I didn't have much power on the go. I've got a little bit more power on the go now well or rather I've got better at managing my power so I should be able to make this one now so up here we've got the exchanger. Uh, you can see we need two basic capacitor banks, which are this, and I just happen to have a whole load of stuff on me here. So let's uh, let's go and do something with that, shall we? Uh, it was like that. Oh, I clicked down too many times through, uh, like so. Yeah, and two of them. Perfect. Now over at the slice and spice, I was making one of those uh, Ender resonators here, so that should be all good and proper. This Ender crystal, though, is the one that I am most worried about. I do happen to have a few. These vibrant crystals, these are based off emeralds, and I don't know how to get more emeralds, so they're they're a bit on a on a on a ration at the moment but no no biggie we will figure that out at some point and another vibrant alloy which i totally didn't make uh so we're just gonna have to sit here and, and watch another one cook and of course get really really warm a biggity bam and of course over here we should be able to oh uh well, there, yeah, that's that's good. Let's craft whilst looking up in the air. Uh, we want this one in the middle. These two. Is it, is it in the middle? Am I missing something? And the ender crystal. Bam. Okay, it wouldn't let me shift click it. Not sure why. But the redstone exchanger, how does this work? We're building up some power. Source block zero. So, I believe we can. Yes, oh, I see. Beautiful. So, we click that somehow. And then over here, oh, oh, let's let's go outside and try this. This is going to cane my power, but something like this, we should be able to go. No, did that not like that? Let's go and see if it's actually swapped it out for down here. No, I'm obviously misunderstanding something, or maybe we just need lots more power. So I think I'm going to end up calling this episode a basic lack of understanding. So here we go, the redstone exchanger. The thing that I had not got right was I did not have the materials that I wanted to place down in my inventory. Uh, in fact, when I have this in my hand, uh, so when I'm not wearing my jetpack, let's take that off. So where I'm not wearing my jetpack, you can look up to the top left. I can't really show you that because when I move my mouse, but top left, you can see there is grass up there in 26. So if we just go, boom, look at that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Can we put some more down? I think we should put some more down. Oh, it's got signs in front of it. Okay. And there we go. That's all the grass we had to put down. But I think that is beautiful. Yeah, on the same lines of the uh, redstone exchanger there, we uh, had passed the test, the quest. Passed the test, the quest, and everything else. Uh, so I'm going to grab the emerald. As I have said many times that we are running out of emeralds. In fact, we only have two less left. I could do with some more. Uh, I am probably going to end up... Oh yeah, I love that tune. I probably am going to end up trying to capture some villagers at some point. Or at least some villager zombies. Uh, turn them back into actual villagers and then oh ooh, that's that's dangerous and then use them for trading but until now yeah we're just gonna have to survive off quest um rewards boom pop that away oh i can't pop that away with of course completely full of obsidian so let's just pop that in there and turn that into stuff okay the next thing i want to get on with is indeed not my water bucket, my, my quest book, is to finish off this mechanised bit. And hopefully this only means that we have to go down the enrichment chamber route here. You can see that I've got it all lined up and the vast majority of this stuff should be nice and easy to get. The basic control circuit, let's see what we've got. We've got some electrical steel in the middles here. And these are just normal steel on the outside. So if we come over here and have a look... 
we, yeah, in fact, have got four steel here and four electrical steel. We are definitely going to have to burn some more steel up, though. Burning, smelting, forging, I'm not sure exactly which one is the correct one there. I happen to know we need three of those. Not for the uh, bit we're just making now, but for the entire uh, enrichment process. Uh, so let's come over here and... Steel casing. Ooh, phase one complete. The rest we need is some redstone, some iron. With minimal fuss. Oh, and a great big jump brought on by the jetpack. We should be able to put all this in here and go, yeah, enrichment chamber. Another one that we just went smashing through. Uh, it's amazing the power of a little bit of uh, planning. So what have we got here? This is an uncharged block. We might actually end up having to move some stuff. Or, you know, just put a conduit down. Either one works, really. So the enrichment chamber. Woohoo! This is for enriching almost, well, uh, an infinite supply of stuff. Yes, let's go for hy hy hyperbole. Uh, an infinite supply of stuff into other stuff. Now, this is like clay into clay. Isn't that what happens anyway? Sand into gravel. Uh, we've got some HDPE pellets. Wow. Okay, well, we're going to get on to make those and make some sheets. There's a... a a pretty good robot building material, actually. Uh, and then other things, just, just you know, we take things and we make better stuff with it. Oh, look, we could go straight to obsidian dust via the power of obsidian here. Nearly forgot to uh, collect the quest after searching through all the ingri uh, the recipes there. Uh, now, we can get diamonds. We're getting given diamonds. The refined obsidian dust would also be quite useful, but there is a half... No, I'm going to go with the refined obsidian dust. Yeah, decisions made simply. So my plan for this little segment at the end here was going to be making this mutagen producer so we could make, like, our bees more as we wanted them. The unfortunate thing about that is if we come up here and have a look at the mutagen producer, we come in here and have a look at this power management tool, you can see that it needs a lot of capacitors uh, and a lot of the bits that are being needed from now on need a lot of capacitors. The problem with that is I only have six left. Now, if you remember, uh, the crafting recipe for capacitors actually requires a whole load of lazarite and things like this like like we did last episode and that required a whole lot of sodium more sodium than i have right here right now uh, so I, it's time to get our bucket production on, our salt production on. Now I am not going to do this through the age old method of bucket and pot like we did last time. I am in fact going to do it using a few of the things we've got lying around. One of the main ones is this water tank that I've got back here. We're going to use the water from here uh, and we're going to use a cyclic assembler. Oh yes, another thermal expansion machine uh, which I should actually have all the bits for. You can see them here. We know how to make all of this stuff so I didn't want to really go through it all again but the cyclic assembler as long as we get the right one we should be able to click on that and go oh yes now this cyclic assembler let's go put it where I want to put it I think what we're going to do is put it at the back here somewhere we're going to hook it up to all these systems but mainly I wanted it hooked up to this power because that's quite important there uh, we need to, ooh, to put some augmentations in and stuff like that but the first thing we need to do is try and work on this schematic here now if we put the oh gosh those cows let me let me walk away from here the cows are a little bit close maybe we should move them out to another ranch somewhere um, but yes anyway schematics are made wouldn't you know, buy some blue dye, which of course means lapis, which of course means lazarite, which of course means sodium. But thankfully, we only need one. So it's uh, eight bits of sodium. Ooh. And nepheline, which is one of those, one of those, and four of those. We'll put them together in the synthesizer. And one more thing that I can't quite remember off the top of my head is, of course, the sulfate iron. Okay, one, one, two, three, four. Uh, ooh, no, it didn't quite hit there. One, two, three, four. That should give us everything we need. So if you'll give me a moment to combine stuff in here. Single bit of lazarite. Pop it in the corner there because this is the important thing. Oh, oh give it to me, please. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay, and then downstairs, we keep a whole load of sugar cane. Well, there should be sugar cane. It's not quite great. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I will show you what that is in a second, actually, guys. Uh, th this is where I keep some sugar cane. We want at least three bits because we need to make some paper out of it. Uh, now, what was that noise? Now, you remember I was having all these troubles with the deflector shields. Well, I managed to get it working down here. In fact, what actually happened was I managed to get it working. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's nice. I actually managed to get it working on this side here. And then I was just like, well, if it works here... Ooh, ooh, danger. 
danger. If it works here, then surely it will work here, which it did. So this is leaving me very confused. I, I'm not entirely sure what's actually gone down there. But what we want to do is use that and that. And now we need to grab a whole load of stuff. Uh, the first thing I'm going to grab is just this off the side here because, you know, that... That is something we need to keep hold of. I also have the bucket of water on me already, so that should be good. Now we need to run upstairs and start thinking about this cyclic assembler. The, like, the thing we want to do is put the schematic in there. We then want a bucket of water. Oh, is it not letting me? Is there no power coming in? Is that, what, is that what's going wrong here? Okay, so how do we set this up to accept the power? We need to go do the augmentation thing. Okay, integrated modular framework should allow us to pull in some power here. It's not going to work like this, though, is it? Okay, well, let's try um, messing with this box here. Okay, so that's the front one. We want that on that. Well, I think we actually want them all on orange, and then hopefully this should now be working. All right, so all the power is being stolen by the uh, Enderman farm. But what we're going to do is pop that there and that there. You can see this makes salt in the schematic. And we're going to go, yes, please, make this a salt schematic. Okay, that's going well. Pop that in the... Uh, the crafting area and I actually want this uh, I should probably have taken that from somewhere else but as long as we can set this up right everything should work oakly dokely uh, in here somewhere we want to extract uh, without a signal which should oh immediately start filling this up and you can see we're making salt straight away wonderful so if we go and get ourselves a little conduit out here there should be a whole load down here so I want one of these to continue the fluid uh, into the uh, igneous extruder and then another one to hook everything up to the uh, output here okay so let's do this like this we're going to start off by putting the fluid uh, output down we will make that connect up in a second and of course we need to now do this okay this top one here needs to be on the output you can see that's orange it needs to push out uh, and that's not quite working as i would like it to because that is on the wrong thing and straight away We've got these breaking down some sodium and some chloride, so we should, if everything works out well, yeah, okay. As the power runs through, we'll be getting more sodium, which means I need to try and figure out how to power this better, because this redstone evanation thing uh, doesn't appear to be pulling power out of the right... I know what's going on here. Like that? Yes, that, that's what I did. I managed to completely close it down. Yeah, good. well done. You know, that, that's what happens when you're trying to sort stuff out in a little bit of a panic when stuff's not working properly. So, one last digression before we actually wrap up for the day. Uh, you'll see over here I've got these torches and they mark the boundary of what the bees can pollinate. Now, I want to deal with trees that are not going to get pollinated, so I'm going to pop them around about here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I have made a harvester and a planter. Now, I can never remember whether these want to go one down or on the floor like that. There we go. Uh, I also ah, completely forgot to bring with me what I wanted to grow. Give me one second. Okay, I've jumped forward a little bit here, and I don't really have a plan, but I'm sure I can borrow my way through it and everything will be okay. So we've got the harvester set up and the planter set up. I brought all these rubber saplings with me. I'm not going to put any filter on because literally the rubber saplings are all I want. I'm also going to pop the sterling generator. Why not right there? Um, now, the thing that I want here is to be able to input some stuff uh insert like that uh, and maybe actually planting a few of these wouldn't go amiss to begin with just to give him a little bit of impetus uh there we go because what i wanted to do was make it so that it was burning saplings as well as providing them for the planter here now i don't know which one's gonna take the initiative first which one's gonna get more power inside of it this one's got no power ah <laughs> Hold up. I know some things I haven't done yet. Uh, so we need to try and get under here and put some power in. Now, thankfully, I've kind of left this little weird gap here. I didn't actually mean to, uh, but it's happened. So we're going to use it. Uh, pop that there and that there. That should share the power across that I want. I'm also going to come along here. Ooh. Ooh, I have neglected to think about how the power is going to get into the planter. Okay, we'll come along like this. Uh, and then maybe this one? It's kind of going to have to be, really, isn't it? Unless we could get the sterling generator under there somehow. But I, I literally just don't know how. Uh, but we now have the power. That's cool. Uh, now, I believe because of this being un unupgraded, if I delete these, this is the only sort of section it's going to do is this 5x5 five five section. Uh, either that or at some point, it's not 5x5, 3x3, at some point uh, it's actually made it so they can't do trees anymore. 
That that would be upsetting. Oh man, I I I feel like I might have got this wrong, and now I need to go uh, check some stuff out. Wow, over 1,400 sodiums already. We are doing well here. Also, over this way, I, of course, had put the planter one block up too high. That that was a bit of a, a schoolboy school error there. But if I'm going to take a moment to... Ooh, that happened pretty quick. Now, hopefully, this should all get dug out nicely here. Go, go, little harvester. Uh, is he out of power? No, he's not out of power. What is the problem here? So he is slowly taking it apart. This isn't quite working at the speed that I remember it working, but that's okay. There must have been a way of making this uh, do more work quicker. Uh, oh, and has it actually dropped a whole load of stuff on the floor? Ah, oh, that is because I forgot to bring a chest with me. Let's see if we can't turn all this into wood. Man, what an oversight in the testing process. Okay, let's get this right, shall we? And we'll talk through it. Okay, so the tree gets grown and the sapling just kind of collects everything from leaves to uh, to, to trunk here. The wood should hopefully be put in, being put in here. I'm not sure why it's not. We, we will figure that out. Uh, but then the saplings go in here for burning at the same rate as they get down put down here to be replanted. And obviously the burning uh, is the thing that provides us with all the power. There appears to be a bit of a a drop range that's that is a little bit unfortunate but we're, i'm sure we can deal with that also if we do this this should encourage some growing elsewhere uh now what is it doing with these logs I, I i don't know i don't know well i'm gonna find out what it's doing with the stuff why is it not putting it in here ah because this is on the wrong thing okay now hopefully everything that doesn't go in here for burning in fact why is that getting in there i have put a rubber sapling let's blacklist it uh no, that shouldn't be the the way. It should it should just be take the rubber sapling on the whitelist, right? Have I got this wrong? Let's put it on a blacklist and see what happens. Maybe maybe we'll end up burning everything apart from saplings, and that will be very interesting. But anyway, just on my way out the door, but I think I'm going to do my Columbo impression here. We have just one more thing to talk about. Uh, oh, this is, of course, the robot. Last time I asked you guys to uh, come up with a name, and man, what a response. We've had quite a few really, really good ones out there. Uh, glitchy for Glitchy and Twitchy. I thought that was very nice, but a bit sort a sickly on the whole coupley thing there. Uh, Robo McRobo face. That 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 was a good one. But me and Philip Yangzov. I'm sorry if I really butchered your name there, man. But that, that's what I'm gonna uh, go with. Uh, we had a little conversation in the in the uh, the comments there. He was coming up with Johnny Eight to to go with the the episode number we were on. Sorry, I was just noticing that the light's getting down. Uh, and through a process of chatting back and forth, what we actually came up with was uh, Twitchong E5, if I can type. Twitchong E5! Because, you know, Johnny 5, jo Johnny 5, you guys get it, right? I hope you guys get it. Anyway, <laughs> with that, back to the outro. <laughs> We have accomplished a lot today, ladies and gentlemen. One of the main things, actually, that I've not been pointing out is my cultivated bees are kind of turning over nicely with a strong strain here. We have, of course, got ourselves uh, a sodium store underway. We've also done all sorts of machines beforehand and got through our quest book more than normal. And we are very close to actually finishing a lot of that quest book, maybe 10 episodes or so, given the pace that I have been going. But I would like to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the adventure we have been on today. I will see you next time where we're going to do some more stuff, probably some more automation so we don't have to carry on making stuff. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!